This is the rear of the port engine, the two blowers. The screened area is the clutches, the pneumatic clutches. It goes into the reduction gear unit. And the pneumatics supplied by compressor for each engine. And it goes to the shaft and down the shaft alley. We're looking at the port side of the ship. These two pumps here are the lubrication pumps, lubrication oil pumps for the reduction gear units. Uh, it's a dual purpose pump on the front, it's for lubrication oil. On the back side is the fresh water, uh, actually that's the uh, now that's the raw water for the coolers for the reduction gear units. Now what are you trying to figure out? And right here is the cooler that would cool the, the lube oil going into the reduction gear unit. And this is the raw water supply coming in. While we're underway, we're constantly monitoring pressures and temperatures. Now we're going down. This is the port, port side engine. This is the starter. Uh, they used to be electric, but now they're pneumatic. So each engine rotates opposite of each other. They both rotate in toward the in, inboard of the ship. The purpose of that is to counter forces. So on the port side, you have to have a port side designated starter to initiate the spin uh, that would be counterclockwise. These are blowdown valves. Each cylinder has a blowdown valve. And inside, behind these is the, uh, these covers is called the scavenging air cavity. It's two strokes, so we have forced air supplied by the uh, blowers. And uh, as soon as the piston travels down at the bottom of each piston, there's intake ports. The scavenging air is forced into the cylinder. And then each cylinder has its own head with the uh, four exhaust valves. And in the center is the fuel injector. These lines are your fuel lines. And these lines are oil lines, lubricating. These are your big crabs holding cylinders in with uh, the massive uh, nuts holding the crabs down. Four, four nuts per cylinder. The purpose of the blowdown valves, before we start the engine, we open those up, we turn the engine on without fuel applied and it blows out water or oil that is gathered in the top of the cylinder so we don't damage the pistons. The, uh, this is a fresh air. We're constantly blowing fresh air into the engine room compartment. Run hall, run hall. Please go to the gift shop, please. Run to the On the back side of the engine is the intake where the engine feeds itself air so since we aren't piped to the outside it's very important that we have adequate air supply supplied to the engine room so the engines can breathe and so the crew can breathe up above is the exhaust uh, the exhaust is piped overboard and this is a cooler line where we cool the exhaust air going out Up above here in the center between the two engines, this is your fresh water cooler for the water that's run through the engines. There's two, there's one for each engine, and these are your lube oil coolers. You have your oil coming in from the bottom of the engine here, 
runs into this cooler and is cooled and is returned to the engine here. And this is the raw water, the river water or seawater that's continually pumped in and out and flows over the side of the ship. Uh, it is constantly providing cool water to cool the lube and the fresh water that goes through the engines. And down here is a strainer. Uh, it's redundant. You can isolate one side to the other if you had to repair it. And periodically we rotate. It's a set of discs that filters out uh, debris and contaminants in, in the oil. This apparatus is a temperature regulator and we make a, a setting on it to regulate the temperature of the engine. We like it to run 150 degrees optimum and uh, so it, mo it meters uh, how much fresh water is allowed to flow through the cooler and then bypasses water when it doesn't need it. Uh, we have one for the oil cooler and we have a similar device for the water cooler. This is the front of the port engine. Two water pumps. This is the fresh water pump that circulates water through the engine. This is the raw water seawater pump and all it's doing is, is bringing the water in from the sea chest from overboard out, overboard out of the river and is pumping it to the coolers. Uh, each engine has its own coolers, so each engine has its own uh, raw water pump. Now these water pumps are specific to either a port engine or a starboard engine. They pump 350 gallons a minute. You, they're interchangeable with each other to whichever side of the ship they're on. This is uh, the oil pump. This is the oil pump that pumps in, uh, uh, cooled oil uh, through the engine. It's a dual purpose pump. It, it goes to the main lubrication manifold and then it also goes to a piston cooling manifold. Uh, the main engine manifold is 75 gallons a minute. The piston cooling is 37 gallons a minute and it's spraying oil up into the bottom of each piston. This is the fuel pump. And these are our fuel supply lines and it's tied into our fuel tanks which in the day of the Navy, uh, World War II, they could put on 188,000 gallons of fuel. We typically only run with about 10,000 gallons on board. Now this is the governor that regulates the speed of the engine. It's your throttle control mechanism. And this little apparatus here, this lever, is the uh, overspeed control. So when we get over 186 RPM, it will kick off and it will disable fuel supply uh, to the engine. It prevents the engine from running away. Uh, this is the fuel lines going down uh, each engine and then it's piped off, plumbed off into every cylinder, each fuel injector. So down here is the shaft alley. You have a shaft alley starboard, shaft alley port. Clutches, reduction gear unit, and your shaft. Shaft is 115 feet long and it goes to the absolute back of the ship and there's carrier bearings all along the way that we have to check and keep on uh, keep track of while we're underway they lubricate themselves and uh, so we get to check in and make sure that the the oil is circulating uh, this device at the back here with the pneumatic lines is how we switch into to reverse or it's called a stern when we're underway. A head is forward, a stern is reverse. This is the oil line coming in to your reduction gear unit. That's your ply in, and then it pumps out the bottom, and it has its own filter strainer 
system. Back in the days of World War II, the stairwell we came in was in here. This was the way in. There was a starboard shaft and there was a port shaft. And that's how you got in the engine room. There was a hatch to go into the birthing quarter areas. And there was a hatch up to the, uh, the uh, tank deck, the hatch to the birthing quarter area, and then out the top onto the main deck. 25 foot shaft. So it could be a challenge to get out of here if something went wrong. This is the oil pump we prime the engine with before we start it. We hand pump engine lube into it and make sure it's coming out at the, uh, uh, the uh, braces on the camshaft. This is where the control and uh, a lot of the gauges that we monitor there, a lot of pressures, temperatures. We have a modern day uh, monitor here that we, we actually get to see where we're going. We have a webcam up on the con so we can see kind of where the ship's going, whether we're entering a lock or whatnot. This system here, we can actually take away control from the con and, and, and work the props from here. We have a, a stern and a head. This is our gauge monitoring our engine RPM and our shaft RPM. Uh, this would be port side, this would be starboard side. And <clears throat> the amount of uh, air pressure being applied to the clutches. A head forward clutch, a stern clutch. This is an alarm system when we lose engine oil pressure or something over temps. It'll sound and let us know something's wrong. <clears throat> 